Good afternoon, I'm Jill Mason, director of Harwich Channel 18. It's Thursday afternoon at around three o'clock and we are looking at Hurricane Irene and here with me today is the director of the Harwich Emergency Management Team, Lee Culver. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lee. Uh, we just had a, a conference call with the National Weather Bureau. They're predicting that the storm track for Hurricane Irene will be somewhere between the Hudson Valley and the Cape Cod Canal. They're thinking that it's going to stay west, which would put us in line for heavy winds, not so much rain, but possibly some storm surge on, on the Nantucket Sound side of the, uh, of the town. Um, and they're, they're projecting, and this is all conjecture, because weather and meteorological stuff is still not an exact science. But they're projecting that winds could be as high as 75 to 85 miles an hour with gusts up to 100, uh, which brings to mind tree limbs, power, things like that. We know things change, Lee, as you just mentioned. The weather is not a given science. And uh, how often are you in contact with the people from MEMA and the National Weather Service? Well, since yesterday, we've had one call at 1230 every day. Uh, with the National Weather and MEMA. Uh, starting tomorrow, we'll go to two calls, one in the morning and one again in the afternoon. And they continue to update us each time with, with um, the National Weather Bureau and what the state's doing as far as pre-positioning supplies and equipment. Uh, they're even talking about getting a uh, pre-landfall da disaster declaration uh, so that that could put us in line for some type of reimbursement. But again, we don't get reimbursed unless the president declares the area uh, an area of, of disaster. So we're just, they're just trying to get all their ducks in a row. And uh, people should keep in mind that, um, again, weather's unpredictable. It could change. The storm could move to the east, which would put us in the area of the wind field along with six plus inches of rain. One of the most frequent questions we get here at the Community Center, the Council on Aging, and at Channel 18 is concerning the shelter. And that would be when do you decide to open it and how are we going to know when the shelter is open? As people might know, we are part of a regional shelter plan, the six regional shelters on the Cape. How which is shelter is Cape Cod Regional Technical High School. Once the decision is made as far as opening the shelter, and that's probably going to be made sometime tomorrow, uh, a news release will be, uh, a press release will be put out. Um, you'll be notified here on Channel 18. Uh, also, my PIO will send a uh, news release to the local um, radio stations. Um, and I think that's about how we'll do it this time around is, is through the, the news media. Okay. And um, give us some idea, Lee. I know that's a difficult decision for you as emergency managers to make to open the shelter because it does involve a lot of people and a lot of effort and, unfortunately, a lot of expense. So what criteria do you use to make that decision? Well, obviously, we, well, obviously we look at, at what they're projecting for weather. If we're looking at a serious power loss or a lot of trees down, um, we would probably open up a shelter to accommodate those people. Um, storm surge is another, another issue. Um, we have a whole lot of our town exposed to the coast, and we have to watch the, the storm surge because we may have to get those people into shelters. And uh, that's pretty much what goes into a decision on when to open up a shelter. Okay, and I know we've covered this before, but I think it's a really important piece of the puzzle, and that's dealing with our pets. So would you once again review for the public where we stand on the pet shelter? We do have a pet shelter at Cape Cod Tech. Um, it is in the shops in the, in the, down in the back of the, uh, of the school. You'll be asked to check your pets in down there. Then you'll go upstairs and check into the, uh, into the people shelter. Um, you should bring... If you have a pet carrier, bring that. Bring a favorite toy of your pet. Um, we need to know that your pet's been vaccinated against rabies. 
Uh, if your dog has a special diet or you have food, bring that with you. Anything, because obviously weather is traumatizing to animals as well as people, so anything you could bring to make things more easy for your animal is, is obviously a big help. And the other uh, question that we've been asked is the term, using the term evacuation, if by some chance the town um, did issue uh, an evacuation order for parts of town due to an extremely high tide or tidal surge or something, explain to us what that means to people. Well, in the state of Massachusetts, well, in the state of Massachusetts there's no such thing as a mandatory evacuation. We can request it. We will notify you through the uh, townwide alert system, which is the phone system. Uh, we will put it here on Channel 18. We'll also notify the local news outlets. We have areas south of Lower County Road, Route 28, and Route 28 in East Howitch, Pleasant Bay area, that are susceptible to flooding if we have a huge storm surge. So we would notify people that they should evacuate. And understand that once the storm gets here, and you've d now determined that you want to get out of your home, you have to understand I'm not going to send somebody out to get you until after the danger of the storm has passed. So you need to, you need to think about where you're at, what your vulnerabilities is, and, and determine whether you want to get out and go to the shelter or go off Cape. And that's my next question. Um, we do, obviously, being in the middle of summer here, late August, prime beach time, et cetera, we have a lot of summer visitors here. And what would your advice be to people who are visiting the Cape and who may think, should I ride it out or should I leave the Cape? Again, we don't know what the intensity of the storm is. We do know that if it comes, we're probably going to we're going to experience some damage, which is trees down and, and power outages. So you should be thinking today whether or not you want to stay here. If you're in a beach cottage or somewhere along the water, you might think about going to the shelter. If you're thinking about going back home, you should be doing that today or tonight. My concern is that starting tomorrow, the roads leading off Cape are going to be backed up. And, and uh, as we've known from past history, we've had 40-mile backups on Route 6 trying to get off Cape Cod before a severe weather event. So you need to think about that today, and you really need to make an educated decision. Because we can do a lot to help protect you and give you information. But the bottom line is you yourself are responsible for for you and your family. And, and you need to think about that. Okay. And right now, Lee, as people look out the window, it's still a gorgeous day. A lot of people will be at the beach planning to go to the beach tomorrow. So um, what's your next step and when can we look forward to seeing another update? Well, I'll be back on again tomorrow. We, uh, we've got conference calls all over the place. Um, the National Weather Bureau is telling us that we're going to start to see some early bands from this storm because this Hurricane Irene is a huge, huge storm. If you look at the weather maps, you'll see that it's huge. And so the bands of wind and rain reach out quite a ways. So we're probably going to start to see those on Saturday. And I understand that you want to stay on the Cape as long as you can, but you, you need to think about when you want to get off. And I have to tell you that I think, in my professional opinion, that's tomorrow. And like I say, I'll be back on tomorrow, probably not till around this time because of the conference calls and stuff and things that we're doing around town to update people. Um, if anything comes up quickly, I, I'll jump on or we'll, we'll post something on Channel 18 so that you know what's, what's coming up. I'm going to ask you please not to call a police and fire station for information because they're all very busy and it, obviously if it's an emergency, dial 911 and they'll take care of your problem. But they don't know any more than we do at this point and, and to call them just ties up the phone system over there. Okay, Lee, thank you for joining us. And I'd like to also remind you folks that we do have many brochures here at the Harwich Community Center on hurricane preparedness. Stop by and pick one up. And if you're computer savvy, go to the town's website 
and click on the emergency information and that same information is listed on the web. So it's helpful to review that to make sure that you've got your emergency contact plans and the list of supplies that you need. We will also be posting any more up-to-date information on the town's webpage as well as here on Channel 18. And we're trying to do everything we can to make the local scene, which is really what you want to know about most, available to all the citizens and visitors of the town of Harwich. So thank you for your attention and please stay tuned.